Welcome to Literary Mindset. Make sure and like and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The Impact of European Warfare on the Indigenous in North America. Introduction. Interaction with Europeans had many impacts on the Indigenous in North America, including demographic disasters, shifts in ideology, alteration of diplomacy, and arms races between belligerent groups. Indeed, it is evident that when contact was made with the Indigenous, that Europeans had an advantage in relation to weapons, steel, and transportation. In many cases, the natives were overwhelmed with novel biological diseases that devastated their populace and placed them at a disadvantage when in combat with Europeans and other tribes. In this video, we aim to highlight how European warfare had an impact on specific native groups. These impacts include a demographic collapse of the indigenous due to total war tactics used by the Spanish, war propaganda that the natives learned from the Europeans, friendship diplomacy, and finally, how the introduction of horses, guns, and diseases impacted the natives and how they interacted with each other. Total War European warfare had many impacts on the Native Americans, including the disaster of demographic collapse. Consequently, the Spanish were able to move into Native areas and through manipulation, tradition, and warfare were successful in creating an atmosphere that led to the demise of the indigenous in those respected areas. For instance, in the year 1539, Hernando de Soto and a Spanish army of 600 men aimed to find riches in what is now the southeastern part of the United States. The imperative of de Soto was to secure riches in the same fashion that Hernán Cortés achieved with the Aztec, but through the conquest of La Florida. Rodrigo Rangel and Gonzalo Fernández offer an account from 1446 when de Soto's men traveled through what is modern-day Alabama and met a large group of native Mississippians in Tuscaloosa. The Spanish demanded that the chief pay tribute to the Spanish by giving them slaves to carry their cargo and to give them women. Indeed, the natives complied and offered the Spanish slaves and women. However, the Spanish planned on kidnapping the chiefs to keep the mass of the indigenous docile while they plundered their resources. According to one source, de Soto asked for slaves and 100 Indian women, and the chiefs gave them 400 slaves and said they would give them the rest in Mabila. Thus, the Spanish arrested the chief and traveled to Mabila. Moreover, once in Mabila, the indigenous were dancing and singing and the Spanish observed that they were concealing bows, arrows, and other weapons. The natives launched an attack and overwhelmed the Spaniards. However, the Spanish returned with a larger army and surrounded the indigenous and started a fire that ultimately killed 3,000 natives. Rangel claims that after they attended to the wounded and the horses, they burned a great part of the land. Indeed, Rangel's account highlights that the Spanish used a scorched earth tactic to completely subdue the natives. The use of a proto-total war method on the Native Americans ultimately contributed to a demographic disaster that crippled the inhabitants. 20 years later, when Tristan de Luna traveled through the same area, he noticed that it was overgrown with foliage and depopulated. Consequently, the natives that currently resided there stated, that their country had once been great and powerful until strangers looking like them had come and destroyed their crops and cities and killed their people. Opposing War Propaganda The Europeans forced the Indians to relinquish their religious beliefs and convert to Christianity. However, this new forced ideology did not always hold with the natives, and in the year 1680, the Pueblo revolted against the Spanish because of a desire for economic and religious liberty. The Pueblo were able to banish the Spanish and retain their freedom from their oppressors. Consequently, the Spanish regrouped and reconquered the Pueblo. Once the Spanish were able to get a foothold back in New Mexico, they questioned and interrogated the Pueblos and desired to comprehend the reasoning for the rebellion. A Pueblo Indian named Juan gave an account of a man named El Pope who led the rebellion. Juan claimed that Pope had spoken with the devil and had a revelation. He stated, Pope came down in person with all the war captains and many other Indians, proclaiming through the pueblos that the devil was very strong and much better than God, and that they should burn all images and temples, rosaries and crosses. The natives lost their religious practices and traditions because of warfare that was thrust on them by the Europeans, and in response created war propaganda that was in opposition to the Spanish ideology. 
Thus, to contrast against the European ideology, Pope utilized an antithesis to the Spanish god and used it as a propaganda tool to endorse war. Just as the Spanish used their religion as an apparatus for war and compliance, El Pope reflected it, but with opposition. Friendship Diplomacy Not all European impact in relation to warfare was negative when dealing with the indigenous. In the year 1749, Tomás Vélez Cachupin became the governor of Spanish New Mexico. Cachupin governed an area that was besieged with competing indigenous groups that were constantly at war. The four main groups that constantly clashed were the Comanche, Utes, Apaches, and Navajo. The governor was able to follow a tradition of subduing the Indians with violence and force, but realized that war created animosity and desired a new approach. Cachupin understood that the Comanche were a strong force and caused much pain and damage when they attacked. Thus, he approached them with friendship by showing respect to them by meeting, smoking, and responding properly when they attempted to test the governor. Cachupin realized that peace was superior to violence. He stated, Make them cling to peace, without using threats, for as yet the Comanches do not warrant them. Permit their familiarities and take part in their fun at suitable times. Certainly, the governor's approach seemed to work because he was able to broker peace when the groups would have disputes. Hence, friendship diplomacy was created for benevolence and ultimately created a positive impact on these belligerent groups. Horses, Guns, and Epidemic Disease In the plains of North America in the 18th century, the Pegans of the Blackfoot Confederacy and the Shoshone were having an arms race to acquire European weapons. A Cree named Sakamapi, who was adopted by the Pegans, gives an account of how changes in warfare altered the balance of power between the Shoshone and the Pegan when horses, guns, and disease were introduced to them. The Shoshone had bigger numbers and received horses from the Utes and the Comanche. Therefore, the Pegans could not compete with them and succumbed in battle to their native troops. However, a shift in power occurred when the Pegan were able to acquire 10 rifles and use them in battle with the Shoshone. The Pegan attack with rifles suppressed the Shoshone attack and altered the way war would be fought in the future. Sakamapi stated that when they drew their bows to shoot at us, their bodies were then exposed and each of us as opportunity offered fire with deadly aim and either killed or severely wounded everyone we aimed at. This new shift in weaponry altered warfare between the groups because the Shoshone understood that they could not face the Pegan unless they had comparable weapons. Therefore, the Pegan responded to their fleeing enemy by hunting and ambushing them. Eventually, the Pegan were able to find the main location where the Shoshone resided and ambush the location. Consequently, when they moved into the camp, Sakamapi stated, Our eyes were appalled with terror. There was no one to fight with but the dead and the dying each a mass of corruption. We did not touch them, but left the tents and held counsel on what was to be done. We all thought that the bad spirit had made himself master of the camp and destroyed them. Consequently, the Pegan took their horses and some supplies. However, the next day, they started to have symptoms of smallpox. European weapons of warfare ultimately impacted the indigenous by shifting the balance of power and ultimately destroying many of them with biological entities. Conclusion European colonizers impacted the native people in the southern part of what is now the United States by pillaging and practicing a scorched earth method on them. Subsequently, this total war method ravaged the natives and caused permanent damage by demolishing their population and stealing their resources. Moreover, the Pueblo, New Mexico, were impacted by Spanish subjugation and the demand that they be subdued to Christianity. In response, the Pueblo eventually revolted and created war propaganda that contrasted with the European dogma that was forced on them. In contrast to the negative, many Europeans, such as Governor Cachupin, attempted to make peace with the Comanche and other groups with the ideal of friendship, respect, and compromise. In addition, the Shoshone and Pegan got entrapped in an arms race to acquire European weapons to subjugate each other. The balance of power would shift in a capricious manner because of the impact of European weapons and disease. The impact of European warfare on the indigenous is vast and exhaustive ad nauseum.